Farhan says it's okay to be self-obsessed and it's okay to work for yourself, but if the entire country works just for itself, then who takes out the time to make the change happen? Uh, hopefully our next speaker can share some thoughts on that. Uh, our next speaker today is a true transformation agent in his own right, the man widely credited with having turned around the fortunes of his company, the promoter director and chief executive of SR Global Limited, Prashant Thruya. Prashant, there are two ways of approaching the problem of getting the youth to drive change. The first is to wait for a transformational figure like Barack Obama to arrive and to invigorate the system. The other is for every one of us in our own small little ways to work towards change. If 700 million people tried to change small things around them, India would be a hugely transformed country. Are we all being negligent while we wait for an Obama to arrive? How can the youth of this country be the change they want to see? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Before I come to Rahul's uh, question, uh, I thought before we discuss change, let us first quickly look at where we really are today. We are the world's fifth largest economy, which grew at an average of about 7 to 8 percent for the last few years, based on the boom which the world has seen uh, in the last three or four years. We were set to become the world's second largest manufacturing economy after China. Seventy percent of India's GDP is domestically driven. Our exports grew in the last few years to close to $200 billion per annum. And our success in many sectors, including the IT, were well, were well respected world, the world over. We are a sovereign country and the largest democracy in the world. But look at it another way. Our neighborhood is consumed with terrorism. The recent events in Pakistan, the war going on in Sri Lanka, the recent mutiny in Bangladesh, and the 26-11 event in Mumbai. And three of us on this panel are from Mumbai. We also have our share of internal strife. A growing example is the Naxal movement which is running right through the heart of our country, right from the border of Nepal all the way down to Andhra Pradesh. Our economy is slowing. The GDP which we were talking about of 8-9% is now down to 5 and 6%. And the world economic crisis, which all of us are fully aware of, has not spared us entirely. We have a growing population of young, educated, but unemployed youth that we have to deal with. And our focus, while we focus on all the, above, the things above, is shifting away from development and investment. And together with this, we have a looming, in the, a looming election which brings its own uncertainty. However, we still have a lot going for us. Our economy, being domestically driven, is inherently robust. Unlike most of the Asian economies, the tiger economies, or the Chinese economy, which are primarily focused on exports, our economy is domestically driven. And the world is actually looking at India and China to bail, to bail them out from this current crisis by stimulating demand. And if you think about consumption, currently India, on any matrix, is about a fourth or a fifth of domestic consumption as compared to China. And you can take Example of steel, China is at 500 million, we are at 55 million. You take petroleum products, China is at 350 million tons domestic consumption, and India 130 million tons. And the list goes on. 